So this is a 18650 lithium ion cell. 18 referring to the width and 650 or 65 referring to the length. They're like a little bit bigger than a just an alkaline AA lithium ion and the alkaline. Um, I've been using lithium polymer batteries to power some of my RC electronics and um, just random other things. Um, but these supposedly have a higher energy density. So this is 2000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts. So I have three of these. They have a max uh, continuous discharge of 20 amps continuous and then 40 amps peak or burst, I guess. So I'm just gonna wire these up and basically make a lipo out of them. Um, but I'm not gonna use a, a BMS, a battery management system. Because um, I have a balance charger, and if I'm going to use them like lipos, it doesn't really make sense. I'm just going to solder them, but I'm going to go really quick, and I'm also going to like try to cool them off really fast. So I have a fan and like maybe a bucket of ice, I don't know, ice pack or something like that. Um, but you don't really want to heat these up too much. They're definitely not as <laughs> explosive as lipos. I'll just configure them like this, and I'll, I'm using some nickel strip. This costs like $5 on Amazon. This is the wiring diagram. Um, each cell is like 3.6 to 3.7 volts and they're wired in series. Each cell's positive terminal is connected to the next cell's negative terminal. The balance lead, the far left lead is connected to ground and the far right lead is connected to the positive output and then the other leads are connected to the 3.7 and the 7.4 outputs I believe. To solder the cells together, I pre-tinned the nickel ribbon and then sanded the terminals of the 18650 cell. Um, then I applied some solder to the 18650 cell and then I rolled it in an ice pack to make sure it wouldn't overheat and like explode or get damaged. And then I um, placed the nickel ribbon on top of the terminal and then placed the soldering iron on top of the nickel ribbon. And so the heat transferred through the ribbon into the solder and melted the solder from the ribbon and the terminal together so that the terminal and the ribbon were bound. After I finished soldering all the batteries together I zip tied them together and then I added the 12 gauge leads that would connect to the XT60. Oh my god no. I just got a little bit of a short circuit there. Um, <laughs> So I've soldered the lipos before, I'm not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. Um, but I always remembered to put a piece of tape over one of the terminals, and this time I forgot. I just forgot to put a piece of tape, and I got a good spook. Uh, there was a big spark, and um, I thought I was so scared because I thought I ruined these, <laughs> these batteries. But uh, I just got to remind myself to cover one of the leads because <laughs> that was really scary. After the short circuit, I just covered one of the leads with a piece of tape and then soldered uh, each lead to the XT60 connector one at a time. Alright, well, I got the XT60 on without blowing myself up, so that's good, I guess. Uh, now I have to add this um, three cell balance connector. So now I'm just going to charge it up. Um, with the with this lithium polymer battery charger, it's on a lithium ion setting, but um, here we go. So I set it to lithium ion, lithium whatever. Uh, I'm gonna set this low just to be safe. Let's do 1.5 and 3s. Yes, so. Um, the reason I'm able to use this battery without, let's feel it's, if it's warm, it looks like it's alright. Uh, the reason I'm able to use this battery without a battery management system, which is basically just a little computer chip thing that controls how much energy it gets, is because I'm using this balance charger. If you want to add a BMS, you can, and that means if you just apply any electricity to it, it'll charge the battery, and the BMS also protects it from other stuff. I like uh, over discharging, but uh, in my case, I'm basically just going to use this lithium ion battery as a lithium polymer battery. It's just the only reason I'm making one is that it has higher energy density, or I think that's the right term. 
some sort of, you know, higher energy content per gram, basically. So it should be lighter but stronger. And I'm actually gonna comp I'm gonna weigh it at the end and then compare it to the weight in grams of a lipo with equivalent specs. Here's the battery working with my homemade FPV goggles and my homemade hot wire foam cutter. Um, also, I'm going to test it with this kind of Reaper inspired homemade RC airplane and just kind of um, see how much time in the air I can get out, out, get out of the 2000 milliamp hour charge. The final weight in grams for the lithium ion battery was about 142 grams, um, which is significantly better than some other of the lithium polymer alternatives I found on Hobby King. Nothing matched up perfectly in terms of like C rating and um, and uh, milliamp capacity or milliamp hour capacity. Um, but um, for the most part, all the lithium polymers were in the 200s, at least the ones that were um, could be considered a parallel to the lithium ion battery I made. Alrighty, this concludes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching, maybe you learned a thing or two, maybe you followed along and built your own battery. Make sure to keep an eye out for the video I'm going to make about flying planes with the lithium ion battery. Um, I'll probably do some tests um, comparing lithium polymer to lithium ion flight times. And um, I'm also planning some bigger projects, but uh, feel free to leave project ideas in the comments below.